What's going on everyone? CBK here with a very special video. I can't believe I'm here saying this to you guys, but I was one of the first people to get to play Marvel Spider-Man 2, and I have some thoughts about the gameplay. We're going to get into all of it in detail in this video, but before I get into that, I just want to shout out PlayStation and Insomniac Games for flying me out to Los Angeles for this global preview event for Marvel Spider-Man 2 where a bunch of content creators and journalists were able to get their hands on the game for about two-ish hours as well as take some really cool photos around these amazing sets where we got to see Craven's Lair and Dr. Connor's lab and just the amazing statues that you saw at Comic-Con. It was just a great time. I got to meet my friend Evan Falarka. Uh, it was just, just a great experience overall. So thank you PlayStation and Insomniac for flying me out for that. It was just a once in a lifetime opportunity for a fan like me who's just been a major Marvel Spider-Man fanboy. It was just great. I just also want to shout out all of the Insomniac devs, uh, the people at PlayStation that were representatives, the uh, writers for Insomniac and especially the community managers for allowing us to have some really great one-on-one -on -one conversations about the game and other things as well. You guys were so gracious with your time and I just cannot say how much I appreciate it. It was really awesome. But you guys are here for my thoughts on the gameplay so we're going to dive into that right now. To start things off, I want to let you know that we did not play the full game. We got to play a demo which starts us off a few hours into the story. The gameplay you are watching in this video was provided to me by PlayStation and is not my own gameplay. I do hope you enjoy the gameplay that you're seeing, but not everything that I speak to will be represented in this gameplay. Okay, we started off with a few things unlocked in the skill tree, and we had two new gadgets to work with. A few suits were also already unlocked for us in this, including the Spider-Man 3 symbiote suit, and man does it look good in this game. I am happy that it's already confirmed that it's going to be in the game so nobody has to worry about it. My time with the game allowed me to experience part of the story as well as getting some time to roam around in New York City to explore and participate in a lot of activities. And that leads me to the first thing that I really want to dive into and what I feel blew me away the most and that is the upgrades to New York City. To start with, the playable map is not only twice as big as the first game but it got a major upgrade in design. I don't think people are prepared for just how much more detail there is in this version of New York. I was completely blown away. Insomniac managed to make New York feel so much more alive in this game. I mean, this city is buzzing with energy. The word people like to throw around is density and does this city have it? This version of New York City is far more dense. There are far more people, there is more traffic, there's more variety in NPCs, there is a lot of changes in this map. Better building textures, improved architecture and landscapes. The city has never looked so good. I often found myself not sure of what part of Manhattan I was in because so much has changed aesthetically from the first two games. The improvements to the city really show off what a Spider-Man game built specifically for the PS5 can really look like. Additionally, the skyboxes are far improved. The lighting feels more dynamic than the three options that we had in the first Spider-Man game. Not every sunset lighting will look exactly the same, at least from my experience. The moon also just looks so incredible at night, and the clouds look so much more realistic during the day. I was simply blown away. I spent close to two hours with the game, and I felt like I barely scratched the surface on seeing all of the new details in New York City. I truly cannot wait to explore it further. So moving on, let's talk about the thing that you guys are all really dying to hear about, and that is the gameplay. Let's start with the traversal. I know you guys are dying to know about the web swinging, and I'm happy to report that the web swinging is indeed much faster, and this is truly a testament to the power of the PS5 and its ability to render the environments we are traversing through very quickly. I can't say it for a fact, but the web swinging really felt like it was twice as fast as the first game. The b-roll I was provided doesn't truly show off how fast you can really go. I mean, I was flying through Manhattan, which truly put a smile on my face. It's important to know that we were also playing in fidelity mode, but I can't imagine how good the swinging will look in performance mode. I, that 60 frames per second with the speed of that swinging is just going to look phenomenal and feel great. While swinging, you will also notice a lot of new animations. The animations for Peter stood out in particular because there were a lot of cool looking animations and air tricks for Peter. I personally didn't get this one, but my friend Evan got an air trick where Peter pulls out a Rubik's Cube in midair and solves it 
it was just one of the coolest things I've ever heard of and one of the most Peter Parker things you could possibly do. Hearing that really put a smile on my face. When it comes to Miles, I didn't notice so many new swinging animations for him. I didn't have a lot of time with Miles as well, so that may just be on me. I also didn't really notice any new tricks for him, which may come as a disappointment for some people, but I personally didn't have a major issue with it. Again, I also didn't spend a ton of time with Miles. I was just enthralled in the symbiote gameplay and the Peter's new gameplay, so that's on me. We also need to talk about the major addition to traversal in this game, and that is the web wings. I'll be honest with you guys, I have traditionally not been a huge web wings guy, so I'm just going to get that out there right now. I wanted to see them in the game, but I wasn't sure how often I would actually use them, just because I love the feel of web swinging throughout New York City. It's my favorite experience as playing as Spider-Man. But I'm happy to report that the web wings probably became my favorite thing to do in this game once I actually got to use them. I mean, I became pretty addicted to these things, and I don't mean that I only wanted to use them. What I'm saying is that it was so nice to incorporate the web wings in with your other traversal and swinging. It was just so satisfying. I mean, you can seamlessly transition between the two for traversal at really high speeds. Between the web swinging speeds and the web wings, there's really no need for fast travel in this game because you'd really miss out on some good fun. It's not necessary at all with the amount of ground you'll be able to cover with the web swinging speeds and the web wings. It's just insane. Another new traversal mechanic that I managed to discover was the ability to surf. Yeah, you heard me. If you're traveling at a high speed over water and land on the water, you won't just fall into the ocean and stop all of your momentum. You actually carry that momentum through the water. You'll be able to glide with your feet across the water until you lose your speed. From there, you will fall into the water, but you can hop back into a swing after you're surfing which is just incredible it was so much fun to do in the time that i did get to play i didn't notice any major changes to physics of the web swinging for example i didn't see any loop de loop options i didn't get the chance to try to run down a wall to see if there was that so i can't really speak to any of that because i just didn't get a chance to try it out or see if it was there i also did not get a chance to use the new slingshot mechanic i'm not sure if it's because i didn't see any opportunities for it or if it's something that you have to unlock in the skill tree that just wasn't unlocked for me yet. But now I want to talk about some combat and boy is there a ton to talk about. I want to start by saying holy freaking crap playing with the symbiote suit is so satisfying. It definitely has its learning curve though. I feel like I'm a pretty seasoned Marvel Spider-Man gamer but when I hopped into this I noticed how much combat has evolved for the better. The game introduces a plethora of new things to do in combat. First off, the gadget wheel that Insomniac has made so famous is now gone. To use your symbiote abilities, you will need to hold the L1 button plus one of the face buttons. And if you want to use your gadgets, you need to hold the R1 button and use one of the face buttons. For those who don't know what the face buttons are, they are your triangle, circle, X, and square buttons. While it did take me some time to get used to the change, I definitely realize how much the change is going to be necessary to make combat much more fluid and speed up the pace. I will be honest, I didn't get much time with the gadgets just because I was so focused on the addicting symbiote abilities, but hands down the best thing to come from the symbiote suit combat is the rage mode. That's right, after you build up a meter, you can press L3 and R3 to activate this rage mode in which you deal far more damage. In this rage mode, you will also see the suit evolve into something a little bit more monstrous. If you played Marvel Spider-Man and Miles Morales, you know that the L3 and R3 buttons are used to activate your suit power. But unless I really miss something here, it looks like suit powers are no more. Don't take that as a fact, but I didn't see it in my time with the game. If they are gone, I'm completely okay with it because Insomniac has given us so many things to play with in this game, and a suit power probably would just make things way more overpowered than they need to be. As for Miles, I'd say that his gameplay feels the most familiar, but don't worry, there are definitely some improvements, especially with the Venom abilities. Like, his new Venom abilities are great. Not quite as addicting as the symbiote abilities but they're still really good i'd have to say my two new favorite things added to combat though have to be the insane kicking people against the wall that is so addicting and satisfying 
and the parrying. The parrying, oh my god guys, I did not know we needed this in a Spider-Man game so badly, but it's a very welcome addition to combat. Getting a perfect parry can stun your enemy, giving you a second to get in a few extra hits, which you're gonna need. The last thing I have to talk about with the combat is just the level of difficulty. I definitely think that the level of difficulty is improved. I know that this was my first time playing through the game, but I genuinely had times where I was struggling in combat, which in my opinion was great. Granted, some of that had to do with me getting used to the new mechanics and just combat overall, but I genuinely feel like this game presented more of a challenge. While I was playing, I had to stop and pause just to ask one of the Insomniac people what difficulty we were on, and I found out it was only on Amazing. I know, I know, make fun of me if you want, but I've played through the first game on Ultimate Difficulty at least 10 times and I can pretty much breeze through that without dying. I talked to one of the Insomniacs about the difficulty and they said that if they were going to raise the power of Spider-Man in this game then they also had to raise the level of difficulty for their adversaries which I really appreciated. I can't wait to see what the game really feels like on Ultimate Difficulty. Now let's just talk about some random fun stuff about the game that I noticed and hands down one of the coolest things from the gameplay is something that I didn't get to experience for myself. But Evan Falarka got to experience, and I must say I'm pretty jealous about it, but when he was swinging around New York City, he spotted a crime. And as he went down to that crime, Miles was already there fighting the goons at that crime location. You could then jump in as Peter and help him out, and once you guys do a dual takedown and finish off everyone, Miles then swings off and says thanks for the help Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean how freaking cool is that? It's exactly what I was hoping to see in this game. The switching between the characters is also pretty awesome. It's a pretty seamless transition and almost instant and it's just so cool to see what the other Spider-Man was up to in that time where you're switching over to the new one. Like there was a time where you could switch over to Peter and he was just chilling in a web hammock. I just love that. It's such a fun touch. The game also features more destructible environments. I actually took some time to go around punching and kicking random things to see how destructive things are and I was very pleased. Like if you're fighting in Queens you're pretty much destroying an entire neighborhood. This game also just looks incredible. Like if you had any concerns about the fidelity of this game or the graphics, I'm telling you right now to put those worries to bed. Like get rid of them, don't worry. This game looks like it's built for the PS5. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's not quite on the level of Horizon Forbidden West, but it's pretty close if you ask me. The facial models also all look phenomenal. Better than ever, really. One particular thing that really stood out to me though was the design of Lizard because I wasn't completely sold on the way Lizard looked. I didn't think that the quality looked that great in the gameplay that was revealed to us back at the PlayStation Showcase, but I can happily say Lizard actually looks incredible. Like more detailed than I thought he could look. As a side note, we did get to fight him in a boss fight and it was just badass. I mean, I think that that boss fight with Lizard is already better than the boss fights that we got in Spider-Man and in Spider-Man Miles Morales. Truly, I, I really enjoyed that boss battle. The whole time I faced Lizard, I just had a huge smile on my face. I, I can't speak enough about this section of the gameplay that we got to enjoy. It was, it was really good. But moving on, the lighting is also another thing that I wanted to talk about because it got one of the biggest upgrades, I believe. Overall, the level of detail has just been improved. Like, top to bottom, the details are just so much more improved in this game. And the best thing is that we got to play an older build, so it's not even fully polished. It's not like it's the finished game. Overall, it's a great looking game for what we got to play. And I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like when it's actually out for everyone. I think it's just gonna blow people away. But those are just a couple of random things that I heard of or took note of in my gameplay that I just wanted to speak about. Okay, so now I wanna transition over into some small story stuff. Don't worry, it's pretty much non-spoiler stuff and I'm gonna be really vague here, but if you wanna know absolutely nothing about the game, and I mean just like going to it completely blind, I recommend just tuning this out. All right, so first things first, right out of the gate, in our gameplay, it featured a cutscene of Peter and Craven in a church, and oh my god, guys, this is really setting up what I believe is going to be an incredible back and forth between the two characters throughout this game. Seriously, the performance by Yuri 
as the black suit Spider-Man is going to blow your minds. I'm not kidding. It's probably his best performance as a character already. You're just not ready. As our gameplay went along, you definitely start to notice Peter go darker and darker. But even in the midst of all of that, you still get bits of dialogue that show Peter is still very much there. The game also features probably one of my favorite quips ever by Spider-Man. I don't want to spoil it, but it definitely put a big smile on my face and part of that quip is actually in the story trailer. It's the one where he says something about not knowing that there are bears in this jungle. But the next part to that quip is just fantastic. Yuri is great. I'm also starting to feel like Miles and Rio are really going to be the heart of this game. Like I feel like their relationship is going to tug on the heartstrings. And if you watch any of my videos for a while, you probably know that one of my concerns about this game is that there wouldn't be enough time to flesh out the relationship between Harry and Peter. However, I need to say that after just two hours of playing, I already love this friendship and I know it's going to be awesome to see how this story between them unfolds. That's all I'm going to say about that. But overall, when it comes to Peter, there are definitely certain moments where he said some things to people that really made my jaw drop. You can see that Peter has certainly forgotten about his friends and is so focused on whatever goal he has in mind and he just continues to push people away. It's kind of heartbreaking to see. The story is really gonna reach new levels of emotion and I can't wait to see how it plays out. That's all I'm gonna really say regarding the story. All right, so you guys listen to me speak pretty highly about this game and you're probably wondering what my nitpicks are. And to be completely honest with you guys, I can't say that I had very many. Sure, there might be a few things that I wanted to see, but I honestly don't know if those things will be in the game or not. Just because there is so much more of the game that is left to be played. So it, I'm not gonna judge them for not being able to see certain things without knowing that they're in the game or not. There's still so much of this game that I have not gotten to experience. Like there's 60 suits incoming with multiple variations. There are plenty of things to unlock in the skill tree. There's just so much more that I want to experience before I can nitpick really anything without getting all of the information. All I can say is that the things that I played were everything that I wanted and more. And if you're a fan of the first game, I can guarantee you're going to be very satisfied with your experience in Marvel Spider-Man 2 just based on those two hours of gameplay that I got. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching and listening to my thoughts on this overall experience. I have plenty of other follow-up videos coming with more in-depth discussion, so definitely subscribe to keep up with all of that. I also, again, want to thank all of my viewers who made this possible and the great people at PlayStation and Insomniac for really making one of my dreams come true. You guys are simply the best. Stay tuned for more in the future, but I'll catch you guys on the next video.